Clarity on Fire, a podcast for people who know what they don't want out of their life and career, but aren't sure what they'd rather be doing. In a world where it's easy to exist, but hard to feel alive, we, Kristen and Rachel, two certified life and career coaches, are here to help you cut through the information overload, get unstuck, and focus not just on how you can have a career you're passionate about, but how to create a whole life that feels fulfilling. So join us here, where we serve up inspiration and down-to-earth wisdom in a way that only two best friends can. We want you to experience the relief of knowing that, yes, you're allowed to want more out of your life and career. And no, you don't have to wander through the dark anymore. Our job is to light the fire that shows you the way. Let's go. Hello. You never, ever, ever would say that if it were real life. I think I've said that too on the phone before, but that's to whom? I not, l- like a client. Quite literally, have never heard you. Like, if you answered the phone, say, hey, hey, I'd be like, who the hell <laughs> is this? I wouldn't to you. I know, but I think that's funny though. Is that there's like <laughs> a different vibe that you're bringing to the podcast that you would never answer the phone that way if I called you. <laughs> <laughs> this is deep examination. Well, the, I don't know. I just find it interesting. Hello. I don't actually think it's bad. I don't think it's good. I think it's interesting. Yeah. But you know that what, like, that the same does not go in reverse. Like, if you hear me talking, this is how I talk to you on the phone, too. But I'm saying I do use it on the phone, but just not to I wouldn't me. to you. But, but again, there's like a level of familiarity with you. I just be like, yo, hey, what up? <laughs> okay. Sometimes I don't even say hello if you call me. I'm just like, what? Well, there's this thing. And <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm just glad you started talking. Let me tell talking. you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I, I just was distracted by that. Did I, did I shock you? Did I, did I shock? Keep you guessing? Do I sound shocked? A little. No, I'm not. <laughs> I am not shocked. I wanted to start out this episode by reading a review that we got. Thank you. Um, A few weeks ago, we reminded you if you are listening and enjoying that. We always, always, always appreciate a rating and a review. We got a really nice one. So this one is from someone who I think if I am using my powers of deduction correctly with their screen name, I think their name's probably Alex. So the title, which is Mind Altering. Ooh, Love it already. This podcast has really empowered me to change my mindset around work, relationships, self-awareness, and life in general. Kristen and Rachel do a great job of addressing all sorts of real-life limiting beliefs that we all need to understand and overcome. My mindset and thinking patterns have been completely refreshed. Keep the episodes coming. Mm. Well, we will. And also, thank you, because that's exactly why we do what we do. Yeah. Really, that's it. Just Uh, to say... What we do is mind altering, makes it sound slightly cultish. I don't mind but that. But <laughs> you're just owning it. You know I but love it, cults. I don't love them. Have I have a weird obsession with cults. I, okay, I'm putting this out in the universe right now. I've been wanting to have an expert on who can solely talk about cults because I think it's so fascinating and the psychology of it, you know? As in like an ex cult. Member or just an Maybe expert both. on cults? Maybe. Well, I would hope Ooh, that would be, that'd be something. next level. Well, oh, yeah. there's so much psychology that goes into it that's actually relevant to everyone because it I is. think a lot of people are susceptible to that but don't realize it. Anyway, this is going off the rails. This is not... Take it back. You mm-hmm. distracted me because you brought up cults and I went like hard eye emoji <laughs> and then I was like... Not about my... cults. No, but... I just, it, I find it fascinating. <laughs> it is psychologically fascinating. It if you are really interested in human behavior... That's a really, really fascinating... I've read so many books. ...subsect of psychology. And watched Wild Wild Country, which, holy crap. That was wild. So good. Yeah, obviously it was was wild. It was was wild, wild. On the nose. (laughs) Oh, my God. So thank you, Alex, for that. And, of course, if you ever want to leave us a rating and review, I ain't going to say no. Um, I might even read it because we love them. So why'd you bring this episode back? When's it from? This one is from... I looked it up. It was September 2018. I, did, I was going to say September. I thought so. Um, but I second guess myself. September 2018 is when I wrote this blog originally and put it on the podcast. It's about if you are an internal or an external processor. And I don't know about all you guys, but 
I've had a lot to process this year. I'm sure <laughs> everyone think, can raise their hand and say they've had I a think lot to process. 2020 has been a year of a lot of changes, a lot of upheaval, which means Extreme a lot of processing. processing. And so if you are not aware of your processing type, that might make it a little harder to figure out or to figure out how to process, but also to understand other people's processing styles. I had a good friend of mine who listened to this episode back when I first aired it. And she was like, oh my God, I understand my husband so much better now because I'm an external processor and he's an internal processor. And so we've been disconnecting. So it really helps to understand your own processing style in the midst of all this, but also to understand other people so that you don't misinterpret them so much. And I get into that in the post. Mm -hmm. I think it's really critical for you to understand this because it's not a given. It's not something we talk about a lot. Not you and I. I mean, like as a culture, we don't talk about processing styles a lot. We talk about other things. Mm -hmm which you get into, you know, whether we're introverts or extroverts or how we're wired, but this is not something we talk about. And it really is important because you can find yourself, I think, suffering because you're not processing properly. Yep. So we need to get into that. Yep. All right. So let's listen to that and then we'll be back at the end. Are you an internal or external processor? I tend to get wrapped up in my own thoughts a lot. As in, I've gone on solo road trips and not even turned the radio on for hours. I'm very comfortable with silence. Because of this, I've heard the same kinds of comments from people close to me for my whole life. You got really quiet all of a sudden. What's going on? Or you have to tell me how you're feeling. I can't read your mind. Or usually in an argument, are you even hearing me? Say something already. The strange thing is, Anyone who knows me well will tell you I can be chatty. I used to bring report cards home from school with all A's and a little X mark that said, talks to her friends too much in class. And if you've ever listened to our podcast, I think it's pretty clear that talking, sometimes ad nauseum, about something I care deeply about is certainly no issue of mine. So what's going on? Why is it that I can be so talkative and chatty sometimes? and so quiet and pensive other times. It took me a long time to figure this out and a lot of seeing similar patterns in people I coach, but it turns out it has everything to do with how I process thoughts, feelings, and information. Most people in my life, my closest friends, and most of my family members too, are external processors. Me, on the other hand, I'm an internal processor. How to tell? if you're an internal processor. Internal processing means that when you have a lot on your mind, maybe you have a big decision to make or you're having a strong emotional reaction or you're feeling a bit overwhelmed with everything going on in your life, you're more likely to turn inward into your own mind and emotions rather than outward to the people in your life to get clarity. Here are some telltale signs to help you determine if you're an internal processor like me. You've been called quiet throughout your life. You tend to listen more than you talk. You crave alone time to be with your thoughts. When you're trying to sort out your thoughts or feelings, you're more likely to turn to meditation or your journal rather than call a friend. You sometimes have trouble putting your thoughts into clear words in the middle of a conversation, especially in an argument when emotions are running high. You're more likely to share how you feel about something with others only once you've had plenty of time to think about it on your own first. You'll often think of all the great things you should have said later after the conversation is over. You hate being asked to talk about something on the fly. You do much better when you have time to prepare and advance. Here are some important things to keep in mind if you're an internal processor. Start a journal. If you don't already have a journal or some kind of writing practice, I highly recommend you start one. Writing is one of the best ways for internal processors to organize their overwhelming jumble of thoughts and feelings and get clarity. Do something meditative. When you're trying to process so much all the time, it helps to have meditative practices to calm your overactive mind. 
you could just straight up meditate or you could do a moving meditation like yoga or taking a walk in nature. Anything that feels soothing and calms your mind counts here. As often as possible, organize your thoughts ahead of time. Whether it's before a presentation at work or an important conversation with your partner, figuring out what you want to say in advance will allow you to get your message across clearly and confidently. How to best communicate with others when you're an internal processor. Let people in your life know that you are an internal processor. Most miscommunications happen simply because we don't understand how someone is different from us. So if you can clue your friends, family, and coworkers in on the fact that you're an internal processor, they're less likely to take you take your silence personally and press you to talk before you're ready. Ask for time to think. Give yourself time to figure out how you really feel about something before opening up to people in your life. And if you need processing time before responding to someone, ask for it. It's as simple as saying, this is really important to me and I'd like a few hours to gather my thoughts and then get back to you. It's okay to share your thoughts in writing. If you tend to have trouble articulating your thoughts or feelings the way you want to out loud, you're allowed to gather your thoughts in writing and then send a note or an email. A client of mine starts all important conversations with her husband in writing before they discuss out loud so that she has time to sort out her feelings and express everything she's thinking as clearly as possible. She said that while it sometimes feels silly, it works and they feel more connected than ever. How to tell if you're an external processor. External processing, on the other hand, means that in order to understand how you feel about something, you prefer to talk it out with someone else or even yourself. When you try to organize your thoughts in your mind, it feels like one big jumble. However, when you can talk it out, everything tends to get much clearer. Here are some telltale signs to help you determine if you're an external processor. You have a hard time keeping your thoughts and feelings inside, especially when you're stressed or overwhelmed. People in your life generally know how you feel about most things. When you're trying to sort out your thoughts or feelings, you're most likely to call up a friend to talk through it. You love brainstorming sessions because you get to talk through ideas, which always brings you more clarity. When you have a lot on your mind, you feel frustrated when you don't have someone to talk it out with. Sometimes you find yourself talking out loud even when no one is there. You often don't know how you feel until you say it out loud. You get frustrated when someone tries to offer solutions before you're done talking through how you feel about something. Here are some important things to keep in mind for external processors. Have a few trusted confidants. It's helpful to have a few people who you can call on when you need a listening ear. Make sure to choose people who are good listeners and tend to ask thoughtful questions instead of people who want to skip to the bottom line before you're ready. Record yourself. Rachel is an external processor and when she has a lot on her mind and no one to talk to in that moment, she'll sometimes record herself talking through her thoughts. She says it's super helpful. Writing works well for you too. Writing works great for external processors too because it allows you to get your thoughts out of your head and onto paper. How to best communicate with others when you're an external processor. Ask for people to listen without jumping into fix-it mode. External processors need to organize their thoughts out loud before considering what to do about it. Remind the other person that you're not necessarily looking for solutions, just someone to vent to. When you're in processing mode, make it clear that you may not be sure yet about how you're feeling. The point of talking things out is that you're getting clearer on what's true for you. So it helps if the other person can let your thoughts flow freely without attaching deeper significance to any of them too soon before you're sure of how you feel. Ask for open-mindedness. If an external processor feels like the other person is being judgmental or critical, they won't feel comfortable being as open as they need to be to get to the bottom of how they're feeling. So make sure the person you're confiding in is capable of holding a safe space for you to speak candidly. 
Common misconceptions. There are so many misconceptions about internal and external processors that can cause people to reject their own internal wiring. So I want to clear a few things up. First of all, there's no such thing as an ideal processing style. One is not better than the other. They're simply different and both have their benefits and challenges. Also, internal versus external processing is not the same as introversion versus extroversion, although there may be some overlap. On the surface, it may seem like introverts are internal processors and extroverts are external processors, but that's not always true. Introversion and extroversion have more to do with where you get energy, either alone or from others, while your processing style is about how you understand your inner world as well as the world around you. Lastly, being an external processor doesn't necessarily mean that you're loud or opinionated or super confident. Just because you're sharing your thoughts out loud doesn't mean you're totally sure of everything you're saying. In fact, you might be talking something out precisely because you're still uncertain about how you feel. Just like being an internal processor doesn't mean that you're quiet, not opinionated, or slow. It just means you need space and alone time to get clear on how you're feeling and what you need to do. And once you figure it out, you might become very opinionated and talkative. What's your processing style? So tell me, which kind of processor are you? What are some ways you found to work with your processing style instead of against it? Share with me in the comments. You may have heard me uh, typing at the beginning, and that's because I had an episode that I wanted to reference at the end that I didn't want to forget about, so I typed it while you were talking. Yeah, you were like, oh, don't forget that I thought. was like... <laughs> yeah, we had um, a few episodes already listed we wanted you to listen to, and then Rachel had another good idea. So we have four now. Let's go in order of... Let's go in chronological order. Okay. Which means going backwards to forwards on our list. Actually, not quite. Yeah, no, perfectly yeah. backwards to yeah. forwards. So the one I added was um, one of our very first episodes, our first expert interview, Emotional Constipation, with our friend Joanna Platt. That is from April 2018. So you got to scroll all the way back to the beginning. But the reason I thought of that is because if you're not processing properly, you can get kind of emotionally constipated. Yep. So I think that you need to listen to that because that'll give you ideas for how to get it out. Mm. Like how, <laughs> whether that's, you know, it doesn't, getting it out doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean external. I just mean like working through something. Yes, working through yeah. is a good phrase. The next one we want to send you to after this is exploring the 16 personalities types with uh, Leslie McDaniel. That was from August 2018. I, I'm not... It's about the MBTI. Yeah, it's about the Myers-Briggs. And I think understanding your personality type has a lot to do with your processing style. They're and so not the same if, thing. They're not the same thing. If you are interested in learning more about yourself, though, this is another good place to go. Yeah, I mean, I just think it always is helpful to understand how you're wired so that you can work with it rather than against it. That's kind of the whole point of what we do. Mm -hmm. And then um, a blog I wrote, How to Tell Once and For All If You're an Introvert or an Extrovert from February 2019, where I get into some of the misconceptions about what introversion and extroversion mean and how to actually accurately discern what you really are. Because people would think, I'm an extrovert. And if you've been listening to this podcast long enough, you know that that is blatantly untrue. But it doesn't, again, it doesn't have, to, it doesn't have much to do with the fact that you're a talker. Right. That's, that's why people get these mixed up. I wanted to make, and I, I, I did in the post, but I want to even more clarify the distinction between internal and external processing and introverts and extroverts because yeah. they are not one and the same, no. even though they seem like they have a lot of overlap. No. This next one, though, is another post about processing styles, but a different a different flavor. It's, it's kinda, called, yeah. Are You a Tortoise or a Hare? This was from back in October 2019. Inspired by... Inspired by our love. Our mutual love. The Malcolm. cult that I would join if it existed. <laughs> to Malcolm bring it right back. Cult. I would join his cult. I would. I, I wouldn't also, even hesitate. I feel like he would be the best. I, I'm like, I would drink, yeah, I would drink whatever Kool-Aid he handed me. <laughs> I think I already do in the form of obsession with his podcast. Revisionist books. History is out right now and it brings Kristen and I such joy on Thursday. Every Thursday I see it and I'm like, <gasps> 
I just I, get a little it's Thursday right shock now of joy. while we're recording this. And I'm going to, my one of my next to do's after this is to go on a walk with Malcolm and listen to his podcast. Mm. It's like a Malcolm walk on Thursday. He's my dinner, my, my dinner prep buddy. So while I'm cooking dinner, I listen to Malcolm and it just makes the whole experience such a joy. Anyway, back so to he, the tortoise and hare. He inspired this post that I wrote back um, fall of last year. And it's about your processing style, but it's more about the speed of your processing style versus internal versus external. And I get a lot more into it. Yeah, um, it was I, inspired by uh, the first two episodes, I think, of season four of Revisionist History, where yeah. he talks about like um, law school, like sitting the LSAT and why taking a test doesn't actually have any reflection on how good of a lawyer you're going to be. Yep. Um, and he brings it back to this concept of are tortoise, you a tortoise or yeah, are you a hare really in your... Good in your information processing style. Um, so it's another really cool distinction on how do you process and work through information. Okay, so that's that. Those are our recommendations. Also, just if you want to listen to what Crachel's listening to, then listen to Brene Brown and listen to Malcolm Gladwell. Mm, always winners. Every time. Never, never a bad episode. No. Just never. Um, also, you learn something every single time. They're just the wisest people. Very different, but I look forward to I them I wish just there the was same. like somehow like an Oprah, Brene, Malcolm Gladwell presidential oh. ticket. And I would... Oh, my God. Can you imagine? That is a cult I would join. Yeah. I'm wow. just like, I don't even care. But I feel what. like it'd be a really healthy cult. <laughs> no, that's why I want to join it. I wouldn't I worry about it going off the rails like wild, uh. wild country. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So we will be back on Friday with a new side chat. It's going to be about what happens when you think your intuition was wrong. Mm -hmm. Your intuition led you one way and you are super sure that was it. And then it turns out that was not it. And then you don't know, can I trust my intuition? Yeah. So we're going to get into that. And then also just FYI, the week after that, we're not going to have any new episodes. We're going to take off the second to last week of July because of all of the crazy moving and stuff that's happening on this side of the podcast. Yes. Not your listening side, the creating side of the there's, podcast. There's, there's too lot, much going on in a my lot life. Going on, a lot to process. <laughs> Physically, <laughs> mentally, emotionally. Yeah, there's just so much going on. And then we'll be back the final week of July. So just be aware that you're just going to be a little mini hiatus. But we'll be back soon. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye.